Hey y'all, Michael Lunsford here, Citizens for a New Louisiana. This is part two to our video series talking about the Laugh It Bottle Art Walks and what happened at the meeting of April 21st. The reason we're having to do this is because the amount of misinformation presented at these meetings was so voluminous that our videos are stretching longer and longer. So we're doing them in pieces. So this particular piece, we're going to be talking about call-ins, people that called to support because you weren't allowed to show up at the meeting, you had to call in. Uh, we weren't allowed to call in. I called in. Jeremy Sweeney told me, sorry, we're not taking any calls. So I wasn't allowed to debunk this at the time. So we're going to do it now. So here is the owner of the Laugh Hit Bottle Arts Lost, Mr. Greg Dugan. And I'm going to break in and talk about his stuff as we go. Speaker is Greg Dugan. Mr. Dugan, you could begin speaking. Good evening, everyone. I want to follow up a little bit on the State Bond Commission hearing. Um, number one, HRI was praised by the Bond Commission uh, unanimously for the work that they were doing. So out of the gate, we start with another whopper, that the Bond Commission unanimously praised HRI for the work they're doing. Well, look, I, I just, I was on the call, obviously. I have the minutes here. We're just going to use the minutes because they're a little faster. I'll, I'll get into the video a little later. But there were three people that spoke to this issue. Myself, Michael Lunsford, Executive Director of Citizens for New Louisiana, Mr. Josh Cullen, President of HRI Properties, and Lewis Russell, Executive Administrator, Louisiana Housing Corporation. Mr. Dugan didn't even speak on the call. I don't even know if he attended the call. There's no record of him anywhere in here. So, whopper number one, debunked. Moving right along. And they were praised for the low cost of the project uh, per square foot that they were providing. So I think that some of the figures uh, that we're using are not exactly correct. So whopper number two already is they're being praised by the Bond Commission for their low cost per square foot. Now, I can tell you, like I said, I was on the call. It never came up. I don't think Mr. Dugan was on the call. I think he may have dreamed this. That <laughs> The cost per square foot was never mentioned. But since he's mentioning it, Let's go have a look. Let's see how much the cost per square foot is because it'll be fun. Now, you remember this document from last time. I went ahead and made a couple of other modifications here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our little handy-dandy calculator, our little friend from a long time ago, and we're going to bring in, you see that number there, that says $16 million total cost. Now, they created their own little $203 a square foot, which is still crazy. That's River Ranch expensive. And this, remember, this is low-income housing, $203 a square foot by their math but they backed out a bunch of money that extraordinary site costs. They backed out almost $9 million. I don't even know what that is. So let's just look at the big number, $16,139,262. That's the total cost for this entire project. Total cost. Square feet. You see, it's, it's right here. See it circled? Where is it? Right there. Circled right there. You see that? So total square foot. Divided by square feet, 32,226 square feet equals, how much is that? That is $501 a square foot, $500.81 per square foot. That's how much it, that's double what it cost to buy a house in River Ranch. Just so you know, just, just for clarity. So now we know, not only did they not talk about how great of a deal they're getting, he didn't even know it's crazy expensive. All right. One more. One more. Here we go. But one of the things that they did praise highly was the fact that the city was co <clears throat> cooperating with the state and stepping up to help fund these projects. And that was one of the things that they were uh, very excited about. Whopper number three. Okay. I, now I really wonder, was Mr. Dugan actually on this call? Because that never came up. The fact that the city of Lafayette is partnering with the state, actually, I, I, I even question the premise of the question. Is Lafayette partnering with the state, or are they partnering with Mr. Dugan's project? I think if I'm giving $1.5 million to Mr. Dugan's project, I'm not partnering with the state. Anyway, one last point. Here we go. And they voted unanimously to go forward with the project, where they rejected others. And that's all I wanted to follow up on. Thank you very much. Should we save Mr. Dugan from his fourth Pinocchio? Technically, the Bond Commission did not vote. Item number 13, right here in the meeting minutes, says what? 
approved without objection. That means there was no vote. No one objected, therefore no vote was called. So it just kind of went through. So technically it did, the vote didn't take place, so we could say Mr. Dugan was incorrect. I'm not going to stick it to him on that point. However, I will stick it to him on the next point in which he said other projects were rejected. So let's go through them. I'll do it rapidly for fun. You ready? Item number one through three, general business called order, approval of minutes, etc. No vote for that. Well, the minutes were approved, obviously. <clears throat> Items four and five, approved without objection. Items six through 12, approved without objection. Item 13 through 15, that's the follow up number 13, approved without objection. Item 16 by itself, approved without objection. Item 17 by itself, approved without objection. Item 18 through 21, approved without objection. Item 22A and B, approved without objection. Item 23A, B, C, and D, approved without objection. Item 24, A and B, approved without objection. Item 25 was a monthly report, so there was no vote taken. The motion to adjourn. Imagine that. It was approved unanimously. So there you have it. No other projects were rejected. He got his fourth Pinocchio. But look, you've been hanging out with us for a little bit. I'm going to give you a little bonus. Hi, and thank you for letting me speak. My name is William Teeley. I live in City District Number 2. Councilman Andy Nockan uh, represents me. And I would like to encourage everyone on the council to vote in favor of this $1.5 million loan to build these lots. Now, the reason I saved this one for you was because Mr. William Teeley called in to say he wanted the bottle arts loss passed. You know, you know who that is? This is Carly's campaign report, one of her campaign reports. They were prepared by William Teeley. So when you're asking what, what kind of conservative would support this, they wouldn't. It's the Carly campaign that's running this. Yeah. <laughs>